Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sun Min Miller. Johnson Sun Min Miller. Thank you, friends, for having me or tolerating me giving a talk. Um, and what I want to talk about here tonight was uh, Bodhidharma's entry through practice. He describes in his uh, <clears throat> um, his uh, outline of practice uh, text. And this might take on just given a discussion some of this we're having here before we got started tonight. Might have some more a uh, little bit more uh, poignancy. And let's just say I certainly don't intend this discussion of this practice as a uh, dismissal of anybody's uh, pain. And perhaps I'll weave back in here some uh, um, ideas about uh, grief and grieving and, and such things in the midst of these, uh, these practices. Well, Bodhidharma's entry through practice is an, an important practice for me, or it's something that I have used to, to great benefit and it includes uh, four practices, which Red Pine translates as uh, first, suffering and justice. Second, ad adapting to conditions. Three, seeking nothing. And four, practicing the Dharma. And hearing that, you might immediately be thinking like, oh, those just might correlate somehow to the Four Noble Truths with, um, you know, that there is dukkha like, uh, corresponding with uh, um, suffering and justice that Dukkha has a cause, correlating with uh, adapting to conditions, um, the, the means to uh, cessation, correlating to the seeking nothing, and uh, the noble eightfold path as the, the means of cessation correlating with practicing uh, the Dharma. And I, I'm really going to focus on the first of these, suffering and justice, um, although at one point I'll or tie in the uh, the other three very 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 briefly. Well, I think what um, think about what Bodhidharma is really getting at with that first practice. I think rather than suffering injustice, as Red Pine translates it, I think perhaps acceptance of karma or uh, enduring one's karma might be a better uh, a, a better way of describing or naming this. And so in this case, I think about like what do we mean by you know karma here and for Bodhidharma, the way he just described there, he's thinking about karma in a very traditional way where um, basically the bad things that are, or the unpleasant things that are happening to us are the result of uh, act, our past actions, whether in this life uh, or, uh, or another. Um, but I perhaps um, uh, for me, a more useful way of thinking is, is karma is in a sense like a subset of dependent arising. Uh, things arise because of uh, certain conditions arise. Um, and well, those things, the, the, the phenomena is those conditions arising. They're, they're, they're the same thing. And then things cease when those, that particular constellation of uh, conditions cease. And so I think of karma as just how we're, we experience that arising and ceasing and those sets of, of conditions that are in some ways most, most personal to us or help to constitute us as individuals. And so I want to give a, an example of, of me um, enduring karma here that now, again, after earlier discussion, I hope doesn't sound too, uh, too trite, but I wanted something concrete, but also not like over the top sort of horrible. Um, and this is that every month I pay down my student loans a little bit. My student loans are my karma. Um, and so why each month do I pay down a little bit of those? Well, because I took out loans to go to college. That's what a condition involving a decision, uh, probably an ill-informed one, perhaps even unwise, but nonetheless, it was there. Um, but other conditions are things like um, uh, come, being born into a working class uh, family that, you know, where college just wasn't going to be just paid for um, by my, you know, by my family. And being in a work from a working class family in the United States, 
where uh, two things, one, there's rather limited support for higher education compared to other uh, wealthy countries where it's cheaper, but also the United States having a particularly, um, say, labor intensive approach to higher education that in some ways makes it better than in a lot of wealthier countries uh, and also therefore more, more expensive. These are part of the conditions that are involved here. Um, my father urging me to go to college instead of going to the mill like him um, because partly tied to other conditions, uh, you can see the interdependence of them here, things like deindustrialization of the 1970s and 80s. And so him anticipating that those mill jobs just would not be there for me or I'd start off and then be laid off permanently um, quite quickly. Um, other conditions, uh, I did not take high school particularly seriously. And I also am not um, a genius, and so there were no student loan or uh, sorry uh, scholarships uh, helping me out there. Um, and so here's a whole lot of conditions going on, uh, such that I pay down my student loans every month. Um, and so here's students as a, a concrete example of or expression of my my karma. Okay, so then how do I suffer or accept uh, my my karma? I mean, one thing is just mindfulness. I can, um, we can learn to, um, in a sense, uh, choose how we how we react to things. And so I can choose not to react with uh, despair, anxiety, or anger um, about um, these loans, uh, and even choose to joyfully recognize the the opportunity that it gave me, uh, able to do something that uh, most of my ancestors would have thought unimaginable. Uh, you know, talking about ancestors, they were you know, farmers, mill workers loggers, miners, um, bootleggers. I uh, come from a very distinguished line of, of people. And um, and so, I mean, just I can imagine for me and my ancestors, I mean, I'm like the miracle of the family uh, going to college like that. Um, and also being able to use lots of res part of my dealing, accepting my karma is using skills and resources to make those pay payments manageable. So think about things like consolidating or reconsolidating loans, um, uh, why, trying to wisely choose repayment plans, um, choosing or recognizing, uh, having some humility and, and, and enjoying recognizing that I, fact, just the fact that I can pay them down, uh, which not everybody can do. You know, for some, suffering injustice is a much more sort of literal thing than, you know, my experience with my, my student loans. It's not something you get I didn't get too upset about, whereas it, it, it's very damaging for, for other folks. And so I can have some uh, gratitude for, for that. Um, but suffering one's karma can also, it doesn't have to be a, well, whatever happens, happens sort of thing. Um, it could involve dealing with one's karma, could also, with this regard, could mean, um, things, you know, like depending on your politics and, and um, ethics and so forth, can involve things like, um, some people organize for student debt cancellation. And so actively engaging the conditions that lead to a person paying down their student loans uh, every month. Um, or, you know, something I do is often promote less college, suggesting that people really think hard about going to college and that a lot of people are doing jobs that don't need college education. So that doesn't really help out me. But um, one way of enduring my karma is is helping other folks learn from my, uh, from my, not, well, not, no, not, I shouldn't say mistakes, but from my, my experiences. Um, well, um, and, you know, and it, this is, can be a rather lame example, depending on what you go, got going on in your, your life, you know, so if experiencing the loss, you know, if, you know people dying, um, you, know, you might, Think like, oh, okay, Bodhidharma saying I need to accept uh, my suffer injustice without complaining. Here, so of course, when you know someone's someone dies, who's um, especially if they're like, close to you, to be like, okay, um, I'm going to feel nothing about this. I'll just remain totally tranquil. Um, that's I don't know. That sounds more like suppression uh, than uh, tranquility. Uh, to me, of course, we can make choices about how we respond to these sorts of things. And, and so rather than responding, suffering one's karma in terms of how, you know, that karma being experiencing loss, 
for me, I think it wouldn't be you know, mindfully choosing to not experience the pain and the suffering of it. It would be mind, being very mindful of the grieving and the pain and not adding to it, not holding on to the pain or not forcing myself to feel a particular way in this loss or to feel shame or um, about about how I'm experiencing the loss, or if I'm not feeling a particular way, so not expecting myself to feel a particular way, or um, being aware of the suffering that other folks have going on in this, and perhaps may help to rec you know, recognize opportunities for assisting others who are also going through the grieving for the, the loss of that, uh, of that person. Um, and so depending on what the, the karma is that we're suffering or, or in, enduring, um, loss of uh, friends or loved ones uh, or family in the hospital versus paying one's student loans. Very, very different sorts of, uh, sorts of experiences, of course, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to make this comparable in terms of the level of, of pain or, or to deny the, like, the very real pain of, of these losses. Um, but this accepting this karma, it's not just, okay, well, whatever happens, happens uh, sort of thing. Now, for Bodhidharma, you know, the way he talked about karma, again, it was, oh, if you, uh, you know, you experience something terrible, well, it's your fault, basically, because you did something in the past, and now you're burning off that karmic debt as opposed to the, to the student debt. Um, and I think that can lead to some really unhealthy stuff. So imagine, you know, that, okay, uh, you know, think of a child experiencing abuse. How exactly how helpful would it be to be like, oh, well, no, that's good that you're experiencing that because through that suffering and pain, you're burning off karma for really bad things you did in the past. Like, wow, you just made that kid's life a lot, lot worse. And I think it's also, it's not just that, well, that's, it's true, but you don't say it. I, I don't know. Frankly, I just think it's kind of a stupid idea. Um, not very helpful. The self-blame, self, the shame, the self-loathing uh, that can come from from that sort of thing. I think we think about karma in a broader way, you know, again, as a subset of uh, dependent arising, that you know, it's a, a whole bunch of conditions going on. Some of those conditions are our actions and decisions that we've made in the past or are making now, but it's also a whole bunch of other things going on. You know, I wasn't, I didn't have any, I was not involved in decision-making about uh, the family that I was born into, I mean, think of my, how I came to these, these student loans. Um, and so, but it's more about the mindfulness of our reactions to, to these conditions, uh, making choices about how we respond to these, um, to our karma or, or even to literal injustice. Um, you know, karma isn't some iron cage we're bound into. It's a web, a network um, that we can, to some extent at least, uh, uh, extract ourselves from. I mean, it's not a, passive thing. We can be actively engaged in our karma. We can uh, loosen some of the knots. Um, and so accepting karma for me is this, this first practice, uh, the entry through practice, is more than just not complaining, which is just, of course, one small part of what Bodhidharma says there. But it can also mean that, you know, taking action, changing those conditions. And so um, about the violence, what a person might experience. So rather than you're like, oh, well, that's, you know, your fault burning off karma there. So, I mean, uh, in actively engaging, you know, changing or ending those relationships in which that violence happens, for example, or engaging in political organizing can be part of engaging in one's, uh, one's karma. Um, and of course, personal choices are, I mean, choices is part of it there. And so accepting their karma is also partly about uh, accepting um, accepting reality. And here's where I'm bringing in the other practices here. So um, accepting karma as accepting reality, uh, adapting to conditions as, um, as mindfully choosing how to respond to that reality, uh, seeking nothing, third practice, uh, not tying ourselves up in more knots as we experience uh, our karma, and practicing the, the Dharma, directly seeing into the emptiness of that web that web of karma and of the self that partly constitutes uh, that web so that then we can act in the in most beneficial way both for ourselves and um, helping others without reinforcing that self and tying up more knots. So uh, suffer injustice 
endure or um, or accept karma. Uh, see things as they are. So I mean, these are um, the, the, these are the first practice and the last uh, practice. So endure one's karma. See things as they are.